Tim McCarthy was set the scene for us here on, the, on that day in 1981. Where were you? Where was the president? You were on the street. Or you were on the street going to the car. Well, Larry, uh, the president had just finished his speech to the building trade councils. We came up the elevator. I believe we took the elevator up to the street level. And we were walking in formation around the president. Jerry, being the agent in charge, was directly behind the president along with the shift leader. And the shift uh, agents, uh, such as myself, were in specific positions to provide 360 degrees of security around the president. And particularly when you're out in public, uh, that uh, perimeter of security gets tighter and tighter around the president based upon intelligence and the environment that you're in. And we were just uh, several feet from the armored car, and the president was walking with members of his staff. Uh, when John, John Hinckley uh, pushed himself forward and actually fired six rounds at about 1.3 or 1.4 seconds. Did you see Hinckley? No, I didn't. Uh, I, went, I was testified before the grand jury on that, uh, uh, in that matter, and I did not ever see John Hinckley. I uh, ultimately knew where the gunshots were coming from and thought I saw some of the smoke generated by the pistol, uh, but I really never saw where J uh, John Hinckley actually pulled the trigger. Where were you hit, Tim? I was hit in the right chest, Larry. Did you think you were in uh, peril of dying? <laughs> well, uh, I'd never been shot before. I hope it doesn't happen uh, again. And uh, I didn't know. Quite frankly, I didn't know. I was down on the ground and I was conscious, conscious and wasn't in too much distress initially. And I thought, uh, at least I thought optimistically, if I got help quick enough that I would do just fine. But uh, I was just guessing and a, a few prayers did pass through my mind mm. while I was waiting for the ambulance. And it was raining, right? I, I think it had ended, the rain had ended just before we got out there, or if it was just a, a slight drizzle mm -hmm. uh, as we got out to the car. Now, Jerry Parr, what did you do? What happened with you and, and the president and the vehicle? Well, Larry, when you hear gunfire, when an agent hears gunfire, you're trained to, uh, first thing to do is cover and evacuate. And what I did, I grabbed him by the shoulder and pushed him down behind Tim McCarthy, which shielded him from the third, fourth, and probably the fifth bullet. And with Ray Shattuck behind me, we pushed him past uh, Tim into the car and we got in there and I fell on top of the president to cover him while the door was open and Ray Shattuck shut the uh, door and I told the driver to get out of there fast. And at this table, did. at this very table, President Reagan told us he didn't know he was shot. No, that's the true. The pain he felt was from your push. This is true, but what happened was, and we found out later that he got hit by a ricochet. And it was due to the training that I had and uh, actually his own robust constitution that saved his life because we were within three minutes of an excellent inner city hospital in the district, George Washington, and we got him in there and once they found that he had been hit under the left armpit, then he made a quick recovery. Supposing he had said, Jerry, to you right before that minute, back away, I want to say something to someone. What's that again? Suppose he had said to you, back away, I want well, to say something to somebody of a confidential nature. Well, at that moment, I don't know, I don't know what would happen, to tell you the truth, but it probably would have been dire. Now, Jerry Parr saved Ronald Reagan's life. Uh, they got in the car, they were going down uh, Connecticut Avenue, back toward the White House. As you said, Larry, the president didn't realize he'd been hit. He thought maybe Jerry had broken one of his ribs when yeah, he pushed right. him down on the floor. But Jerry saw blood come up from the president's mouth, am I right? And That's instantly right. made the decision, divert to the hospital. The hospital even though they were coming. If he had waited another 30 seconds or another minute to figure out what to do, as you know, when Ronald Reagan collapsed in that emergency room, he was that far from going into shock. At his age, mm. shock would have done it. And the former first lady, Nancy Reagan, will join us by phone right after this. She has been called the strongest first lady in the last 35 years. She and her husband, the subject of a two-part article, the second part is out now in Vanity Fair, and she joins our conversation by phone. She is Nancy Reagan, who I would imagine looking at people like Tim McCarthy and Jerry Parr, Nancy, is very special to you. Oh, special. Jerry and Tim, I'm so glad to see you. I can't tell you. <laughs> How are you, Mrs. Reagan? How are I'm you? I'm fine. Good, good. Good to I'm hear your fine. voice. It's good to hear yours, Tim. Well, was Tim, was, were you taken to the same hospital as the president? Did you go to George Washington? Yeah. Yes. Tim, I mean, Tim, you went to George Washington, right? Yeah, the only difference was, Larry, that the, the president walked into the hospital and I came by stretcher. And if, uh, <laughs> if I had known that, I would have sprinted into the hospital. But, uh, yeah, we were, we were just a, a one or two uh, uh, bays apart in the hospital. Nancy, what's the feeling of the, well, you can't tell us others, your feeling toward the Secret Service 
when you're in that job eight years? Oh, well, I, I love the Secret Service. <laughs> and these two fellows, I, you know, Sam was absolutely right. If, if Jerry hadn't made the change from driving to the White House to the hospital, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a husband. Were there uh, ever times you were annoyed by them, Nancy, where no. you didn't want them around? No, <laughs> no. I was always very happy to have them around. I, I, I'm just so happy to see you two. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank when, you. Did you, you visited Tim a lot when you would visit your husband, right? Oh, sure, yes. Yeah. The, the, uh, the, this special feeling that develops when you realize these men would take a bullet for you too, right? Yeah, well, I, I hope I guess, so. By the way, is, I think it, so. is it for the, for the whole first family, Jerry? Yes, it is. So in other words, if a first lady is threatened, the Secret Service is that shield. It's uh, cover and evacuate. Do, is it, does it make a difference, Tim, what the Secret Service thinks of the person? Like, if you like Nancy especially, does that make it a better job, more difficult job, or not? Or is it just going to work? Well, certainly that might have something to do with it, but, uh, you know, you have to be a professional about this. Everything has to be put aside. Personality has to be put aside. And you have to do your job. And, and uh, I was assigned to supervise Mrs. Reagan's protective detail for quite some time. And I was certain there were some times when we told her a few things we simply did not want her to do that she probably wasn't real happy with Tim McCarthy, but Mrs. Reagan was very good about it and always worked with us to give us the opportunity to give her and the president the best protection that we could give them. I was never unhappy with you, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy, for, for a little history, where were you when, when Ronnie was shot? I was at the White House. I'd gone to a luncheon, and for some reason, this never happened to me before or since, I suddenly had the feeling that I wanted to go. I wanted to get out and go back to the White House, and I did. And I was up in the, um, in the solarium. We were in the midst of, you know, all our stuff that we were doing there. And, and that's where George Offer came up and found me and said there's been a, an accident, a shooting. But it's all right. He's, he, he, the president's all right. Well, by that time, I was halfway down the hall to the elevator to go to the hospital <laughs> and um and i did <laughs> when you got there how quickly did you know that it was real serious oh i knew right away <laughs> they tell you in the car pretty much no they wouldn't know they know but uh, they still were telling me that he wasn't hurt that he wasn't hit and i think it was mike deaver who met me at the door of the hospital and said he was hit and sam where were you at this point well, I watched this. I was five feet from Hinckley on the rope line there where our cameras were lined up. And when he began shooting, I felt the concussions off to my right. And I knew when I heard shots, because I knew what shots were, had to be at the President of the United States. And I watched Jerry and Ray push Ronald Reagan into the car, because while I was aware that Tim had fallen to the ground and Brady, the press secretary, and Delahanty, the cop, the job of a reporter in that instance is to watch the president, I mean, with all due respect. And I didn't think it was hit either because suddenly a very quizzical look appeared on uh, President Reagan's face. But it looked like a man who, hey, I hear shots, this is terrible, rather than a man who suddenly had felt, uh, again, some impact on the body. And I didn't think he'd been hit. Leon, what were the first thoughts of a member of Congress? 